Do you suffer from the occasional inability to spin your winch? Don't be embarrassed. It happens to a lot of guys. Now, I think we can figure out what's going on here without taking it to a shop. Let's have a look. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. My name is David Clark. Today, we're going to take a bit of a break from the snowmobile since we have absolutely no snow anyway. And we're going to have a look at my ATV. So one of the few decent snowfalls we had this year so far, I was out clearing snow on the ATV and I was just finishing my neighbor's driveway up. I do his driveway as well because I'm such a nice guy. Actually, it's because it's so much fun to clear snow on the ATV. and the nice guy thing. Now, just as I finished clearing his driveway, the winch on the ATV quit working. Now, that's a big deal because that's what I use to raise and lower the blade on the machine. Now, I do have an idea what's probably going on, but if I just fix my machine, that's only gonna help you if you have the same problem. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a typical winch setup in an ATV. We're gonna talk about all the components in the circuit. There may be one or two you're not familiar with. And then I'm gonna go through the steps that I would take to problem solve an issue with the winch. All right, the first few parts are pretty straightforward. We've got a winch in the front, we've got a 12 volt battery in the back. You put the red wire and the black wire to the two terminals on the winch and it's gonna turn. If that's all you had, it would be winching all over the place. So we put a switch in there to break that circuit. That part I think everybody knows. This is a two position switch. So it's got three wires coming out of it. Now on a typical ATV setup, you're also gonna have one of these. This is called a solenoid. Sometimes it's called a relay. If you wanna know what it's for, have a look at the wires going to the winch. So they're going to be big, thick, heavy wires. And in fact, one of those wires is probably going to be thicker than all three of the wires from your handlebar switch put together. That's because of the number of amps that winch draws, especially when it's under load. So the more load you put on the winch, the higher its amp draw. So unlike your headlights that are going to draw a couple of amps, that winch is going to draw hundreds of amps when it's under load. So, I mean, technically you could just have a winch and a battery and a switch, but then the switch and the wires going to that switch would have to be big heavy wires and a big heavy switch and you wouldn't want that on your handlebar. So that's why we use a solenoid. So when I move the switch on the handlebar, it doesn't send 12 volts to the winch, it sends it to the solenoid. So basically what happens when you energize the solenoid, there's two little coils inside, one for each direction on the winch. If I energize one side, it creates a magnetic field that moves a little armature in there and that triggers the switch and sends power to the winch. There's two other components that you may see on your ATV. So one is a fuse or a breaker. So there may be something that if you overload that winch and you're drawing too many amps, you've got something to protect the wiring, or you might have a remote control. Now I don't have one of these. Um, typically you see these on side-by-sides in Jeeps and things like that, where you can control the winch from down at the load. Most of the ATVs that I've ridden typically have this set up and they don't have a remote control. So your solenoid is gonna have a couple of connections. You're gonna have four heavy studs, two in from the battery and two out to the winch. And then you're gonna have either two or three lighter connections for your handlebar switch. Now this one only has two. All right, so your switch has three wires. You've got a red, a green, and a black. So the red is pulling positive 12 volt from the ATV and you're putting it through the solenoid when you complete a circuit with either the black or the green. And that's depending on which way you move this switch. Some solenoids will have three terminals to connect your switch to. So you can draw your 12 volt directly from the solenoid. This one, you've got two terminals on the solenoid and then you wire the third into something that's switched by the ignition. Now that way, if you have a short somewhere, then once you've shut your ignition off, you're not drawing your battery down. So now we know the components in the system and how they work, we can start to narrow it down and figure out why our winch isn't working. So the first thing that we know that we need in the circuit to make that winch work is a battery that's got enough amps and enough volts to turn that winch. Now I know that's not a problem in this case, Firstly, because it starts the ATV and my starter draws a fair number of amps. It's a lithium battery and I've had a couple of guys comment, you know, lithium batteries don't work great in the cold. This one is an EarthX battery. It's rated for cold weather use. It's been out here in some pretty cold temperatures and I use this machine to plow. So it's been through a lot of charge and discharge cycles. It's fully charged and full cranking amps. So the battery is okay. One thing to remember when I'm doing my testing is that the lithium battery has a slightly higher resting voltage than a lead acid battery. So rather than 12.6 volts, I'm gonna see around 13.3 and that's okay because remember when the ATV is running from the charging system I'm going to see 13 to 14 volts anyway. Now as simple and obvious as it sounds take a second and make sure that those connections are clean and tight because you get a partial connection it can be enough to stop your winch from working. Okay now we're going to check the other components in that circuit. Now the first thing I'll point out if you've got an old sled or an old ATV and you're going to want to work on it yourself a multimeter is your best friend. 
Actually, if a multimeter is your best friend, you should probably join a club. That's kind of sad. But a multimeter is really useful to get and learn how to use. All right, so I've wired up a test circuit here so I can walk you through how to test your circuit on your ATV. So obviously these components are going to be installed, but you've got your battery, you've got your solenoid, and you've got your switch. So the first thing you want to do is check the two terminals where the lines come in from your battery. So regardless of where your switch position is, at this point, uh, we're in front of the switch, so we should have about 13 point something volts uh, if I put my meter across these two. If you don't have 12 volts getting to the solenoid, then that's your problem. You either want to visually inspect the wires between the solenoid and the battery, double check those connections, or you want to use your multimeter and check each wire for continuity. Okay, next thing you're going to do, once you've determined you have 12 volts going to the solenoid, you want to test what's coming out. So you're going to put your probes from your multimeter across the other two terminals, and you're going to move the switch. One way, you should have 13 point something out, and then if you move the switch, you should have minus 13 point something out, because you're reversing the polarity to the winch. If you don't have that, you're going to test the switch. All right, so if you think the culprit is your switch, then you can either bypass the switch and run a wire across to complete the circuit, uh, or what you could do is unplug the switch and then test continuity. Because again, what happens when I move the switch is I'm completing a circuit, right? So what I could do is put my red probe on my red wire and take the black wire and one at a time test the green and the black, move that switch and see if I have continuity. Okay, so if the switch is fine, the battery is fine, and the connection to the solenoid is fine, but you don't get 12 volts coming out, then the solenoid's failed. Now, these are really prone to corrosion. That's typically what happens. So if you get corrosion built up in there, that armature either won't move or doesn't move completely. So yeah, you can take it apart, spray some contact, electrical contact cleaner on it, maybe get a screwdriver and see if you can tap it and get it freed up. But uh, yeah, me personally, I would just replace it. All right, so my battery is good. The leads from the battery to the solenoid are fine. My switch is fine, and I've got my 12 volts coming back out of the solenoid. Now I know my problem's up at the front. It's a couple of things it could be. It could have a busted wire between the solenoid and the winch. It could also just be that the winch is failing, right? It's an older winch. They wear out like anything else. You get dirt and metal filings and things like that built up inside the casing. You can take them apart and clean them and see if you can improve it, but, you know, I would be more inclined just to buy a new winch. Now, as a winch starts to fail, you may find things like the cable getting twisted up inside the drum. Weren't a problem before, but now that you have that reduced pulling power, it'll actually stop that winch from working. The other thing that you might check if your winch isn't working, you usually have some kind of a knob on the side of the winch. If you pull it out, it'll usually put it into a freewheel mode so you can just pull your cable. Sometimes if you don't fully engage that after you do that, that'll keep your winch from working as well. All right, now for me to test the connections on my solenoid and at the end of the switch, I'd have to take all the plastic off this ATV. Now, firstly, I don't think I need to because I've got a good solid click down underneath whenever I move that switch. So I'm guessing the wiring between the battery and the solenoid is fine and I'm guessing my switch is fine. So before I go to all that trouble, the first thing I'm going to do is put my multimeter on the winch end of that circuit and see if I'm getting my voltage there when I move that switch. So it was actually my neighbor who pointed out that it could just be the connections on the winch. They get corroded, they're not making a good contact, and if I look at these terminals, they're pretty corroded, so I'm actually kind of hoping that's what it is. Okay, so I'm going to set my multimeter for 12 volts DC. It's going to be a little tricky because I'm going to have to get these into place and then hold them with one hand. So I do have 13 volts at this end, so I'm guessing that it's just the connection on that winch end. Okay, so not very exciting, but all I'm going to do, I'm going to take the terminals off with a wrench. I'm going to use a wire brush to give them a cleaning, put it all back together and see if with a better connection the winch works. Okay, I just put that connection back on. I hate to say this, but with the weather like this, this snowmobile is actually just a good bench to sit on while I work on my ATV. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see if we accomplished anything. All right, guys, it looks like our problem was just a corroded and loose connection. Pretty easy fix. If that hadn't fixed the problem, then it would have been the winch itself because I don't have a breaker or a fuse anywhere here. Now, just another quick tip because I was talking about the amp draw on your battery with the winch. Because we said when it's under load, it draws a lot more amperage. When you're plowing snow, when you get up into a snow bank, back up a little bit before lifting your blade and then you're not putting all that load on the winch and the battery. All right, I think I'm going to go plow a little bit of snow just to give this a test. We had actually like maybe six or eight centimeters overnight not quite enough to ride but we're getting there um so now i want to hear from you guys if you've got an atv with a winch have you had a problem with it in the past and what did it end up being all right guys i think that's it for me for another video so until next time i'm dave clark thanks for taking the time to watch
So just quick rehab, recap, <clears throat> rehab. My switch is fine and I've got my 12, 12 volt. <laughs>